this is the shaft a spherical roller bearing and this is the shaft what do you mean by a spherical roller it's either cylindrical or it is sphere so a spherical roller is a roller bearing with the surface like this so sides are curved but this is still cylindrical these are the spherical roller bearings and then there is one more type which is known as a needle bearing in a needle bearing the size of the roller is lengthwise it is large cross section wise it is very small so it's like a needle a needle will have large length and small cross section as compared to a regular roller bearing so very long also known as pencil rollers or needle rollers so with this change in the geometry from the point contact roller bearings will offer line contact what happens to the load carrying capacity roller bearing or ball bearing which will have higher capacity for carrying loads this increases you are right because of line contact this will have higher load carrying capacity what about misalignment this will permit more misalignment or less misalignment because of rollers yes right word less so this permits it doesn't permit misalignment or we say this permits minimum amount of misalignment so accordingly you have to decide if the misalignment is minimum if the load carrying capacity required is is large or heavy we should go with the rolling contact for larger axial load we should use tapered roller contact when we want to further reduce the coefficient of friction spherical roller bearings are used value of mu is very very small and because of the spherical shape which is closer to a ball bearing this will also allow little misalignment little misalignment so you have already designed for the the inner and outer rays for the roller uh, bearing but then you suddenly realize that there is some misalignment and it should allow for misalignment so replace this roller bearing with a spherical roller bearing and little bearing is used whenever you want longer life of the component so this will permit for longer life as compared to the remaining three bearings
Are you getting the logic why? Because of the shape, this can, this can withstand more axial load. Or why? Because of the spherical nature, which, which brings it closer to the ball bearing. This is having a smaller coefficient of friction and this will allow little more misalignment as compared to the normal roller bearing. And this needle bearing, this will have a longer life as compared to the ball bearing or the roller or the tapered roller bearing. Now we are talking, going to discuss about the life of the bearing. So there is this A, F, B, M, A. What could be the full form for this? Uh, needle bearing is having line contact. Spherical bearing is having uh, less of line contact, but little more than point contact. So it's not perfectly sphere. The spherical uh, roller bearing is not perfectly sphere, but it is um, the shape as it's shown in the image, as shown in the figure. So it is permitting more than point contact and less than line contact. Misalignment is the misalignment between the, the two shafts. The, if I take the example of the fan, this fan is continuously rotating and there is an outer race which is fixed and then there is an inner shaft which is rotating. So there is one part which is rotating and there is another part which is stationary and between these two parts for this to move freely between the outer part and the inner part there has to be this bearing which is a ball bearing in our case now what is the chance that this axis and this axis they are concentric or they are eccentric that is misalignment so it's not always that the two shafts are coupled like this. There can be, um, this is the outer part and this is the inner part. And one of them is rotating with respect to other. So there is a relative motion and during this relative motion, the, their axis might be misaligned. Is this what you are asking me, Prajwal? Have I answered your question? Okay. So what could be AFBMA? I told you yesterday, Anti-Friction Bearing Manufacturing Association. So this is Anti-Friction Bearing Manufacture, Manufacturing Association or Manufacturers Association who have finally um, decided some coding, some good practices so this life of the bearing is now universally followed everywhere by the coding or by the formulas that are given by this AFBMA, Anti-Friction Bearing Manufacturers Association. So earlier, the life of the bearing, this was rated based on the compressive stress. But then later it was... Uh, observed that this is not the correct criteria. This was the basis of rating of the life. And so this one was abolished and they observed that the cause of failure is fatigue failure. It fails after given life. So after a few number of cycles, if it fails, 
it is not subjected to a continuous compressive stress but it is subjected to a contact stress and so it depends upon its life uh, after a few number of revolutions and hence they define the life of bearing as life in hours at a known speed or at a given speed or number of revolutions before the evidence of fatigue failure appears now when we are talking about the fatigue failure appearance this is not for general people like us who are using the bearings but this is for researchers or this is for the bearing manufacturers who decide the life based on number of revolution before which they get to see the crack but for general public who are using the the bearings so the ball bearings or the roller bearings for them the life is life in hours at a known speed or at a given speed so if your fan is continuously uh, used in its maximum or its full speed then its life in hours in given number of million hours that is defined so we are going to solve the numericals based on the life of the bearing then there are two more concepts one is elton life elton life is the life that will be using for our calculation and this is by experimentation that it is observed what do you think would be elton life if there are 100 bearings on which experimentation is performed and all these bearings they are tested on identical conditions the life at which 10% of the bearings fail 90% survive you can write down a definition the life at which 10% of the identical bearings tested at the identical conditions would fail and 90% will survive that life is l10 life i repeat by experimentation the life at which 10% of the identical bearings tested at identical conditions would fail and 90% will survive this is known as l10 life so out of 1000 bearings which are tested Say hundred would fail. The moment hundred would fail, that life becomes the L10 life, and nine hundred should survive. Or out of ten bearings, the moment one bearing fails, that is the L10 life. But nine bearings should survive uh, that much load. That is the L10 life. And another is average life or median life. again by experimentation in the tested in the identical condition the life at which 50% bearings would fail and other 50% would survive which life would be more which one would be more greater average life or elton life average life so because it is allowing 50% of the bearings to fail so this average life 
or the median life will be almost five times of L10 life. But this is not the criteria that is to be used because by the time this life is reached, 50% have already failed. So if we talk about the graph between these lives for number of cycles, if these are number of cycles n, and this is number of survivals, survival of bearing. As the number of cycles increase, the number of bearings which would survive, that would go down. And here, if this is L10 life, where the number of bearings surviving is 90%, this is L10 life. Here, the number of survivals are 50%, say. This would be average life. Right? Then there are two more uh, criteria given in the design data book. We'll quickly go through these two and then we'll refer to the design data book for better understanding of all these terms. There is a term called static load carrying capacity. Static load carrying capacity, which is given by C0 which by definition is the maximum static load till permanent deformation in static condition. You can write down, this is the maximum static load. It is withstanding the load while it is not rotating. So it's the static load till permanent deformation. in static condition. And the next term is, if this is static, what would be the next term? Dynamic. Dynamic load carrying capacity. given by C, simply C. And how do we define this? So by definition, this is the pure radial load. We are considering only radial load. The pure radial load which a set of bearings can take which a set of bearings can withstand or can sustain so that their L10 life is 1 million revolutions, which is 10 raised to 6 cycles. Or 1 million. Revolutions. This is known as dynamic load carrying capacity. So if it is subjected to axial load also, we find its equivalent radial load. So by definition, this is the pure radial load that a set of bearings can take so that its L10 life is 10 raised to 6 cycles or 1 million revolutions. 
we'll see how to use these two terms in while solving the numerical next 5 minutes let us quickly open this psg design data book open page number 4.1 psg design data book page number 4.1 What do you see on page number four point one? Shubham, do you have design data book? Shubham, roll number hundred. Are you there at the first place? No. Piyush, one not one. Okay, open your design data book. Tell me what is there on page number four point one. Sushmita, Shubham, you are traveling, but if you can join through your mobile, you can also open the design data book in your mobile, right? Abhishek. Tell me what's given there on page number four point one, PSG design data book. Designation and application. So you you see different types of bearings. First one is deep groove ball bearing. Second is self-aligning. then single row angular contact double row spherical cylindrical tapered then the thrust ball bearing which can withstand the load axial loads more in one direction and double thrust which can take axial load in both the directions and spherical roller thrust bearing so thrust is essentially for the axial loads the applications are given and the figure is giving a short um, in short a brief explanation of how this bearings look like next page is some nomenclature how to get the equivalent load dynamic load carrying capacity probability of survival turn the pages come to 4.4 what is given on page number 4.4 equivalent bearing load so how are we going to calculate the pure radial load depending upon whether the axial is greater than radial load or radial is greater than axial load for different types of bearings so we will be getting the number here if you turn more pages come to 4.12 onwards page number 4.12 onwards 4.12 4.13 4.14 so as i said this um, afbma is one association likewise there is an skf series there can be asme series there are different kind of series so this design data book this is giving us the skf series which says that the first digit 6 indicates deep blue ball bearing if you turn the page these are all for series 6 For self-aligning bearing, the series starts with two. For single row angular contact bearing, the series starts with seven. So likewise, the first digit, this which is indicating a type of bearing, this depends upon which series we are following. Then there are <coughs> details given for the diameter for the inner rays, the diameter for the outer rays. then the last two columns last three columns they are giving you the static load carrying capacity c not and dynamic load carrying capacity similarly maximum permissible speed because the life is defined at this speed 
So you will get this data and the designation for different types of ball bearing on different pages. For ball bearing, for roller bearing, for angular contact, thrust bearing. So tomorrow, Thursday, and similarly next week, we'll try to solve as many problems as possible. If you come in physical mode, it would be better for your understanding. Otherwise, we continue with whatever we are doing now. OK, so that's all for today. We'll, uh, we'll start solving numericals tomorrow. Be ready with your design data book and calculators. You're free to ask questions, if any. Omkar. Aditya. Why the life of line contact bearing is higher? You, you mean to say the, the needle bearing? Okay, so this needle bearings, they are designed to um, for higher contact stresses. So when we choose the material, the kind of heat treatment that is given, they are designed for higher contact and with with its L by D ratio is so adjusted, its length is greater than the diameter that it can, with little amount of wear also, this continues to transmit load. So if there is wear on one end of this needle bearing, the remaining length can still withstand the load, which is not true in the case of a ball. The moment there is a crack, the entire ball, this stops rotating or this will start behaving in an erratic fashion. And it is because of this erratic behavior of the balls that this will suddenly start creating huge noise, which is not the case with the roller bearings. But then they are costlier. The needle contact bearing would be all the more costlier. This will reduce the axial space. This will increase, uh, this will reduce the radial space, increase the axial space. So these are the special purpose bearings like the needle contact bearing, which are used when you want to increase the life. Okay. Anything else? Uh, what normally we study in theory is, is very superficial, only conceptual. Um, there are hundreds of different variables which the, the designer has to keep in mind. Since everything cannot be covered, otherwise only bearing design, this can be a complete subject. This can be a complete subject for one semester. So actually, if you talk about this, this goes in that depth. But since we have to cover everything that is there in the part of a machine or entire machine can be designed, with the knowledge of the belt drive, gear drive, shaft, bearing, flywheel, motor. So you have an overview of all these components and you can do a, a basic design. But with the knowledge of the basics, you can definitely explore more. Is that clear? Okay, thank you. You are free to leave the meet. Nanda has taken your attendance.